All right. Well, all we're going to do is take out that material to a depth of about 281. Now these are for our adjustment screws on, uh, there's two on each one, and since we haven't come to final dimensions, I could wait to do these later, but I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes now. I'm probably not going to worry about tapping them, and I'm definitely gonna, not going to worry about countersinking them until we, get the, uh, until we get the outer contours done and get them smoothed up. All right, well here's where we are to this point, and if I can keep from knocking everything over, that'll be looking at it from the top. Our bit will sit in here and be able to pivot. Our center drill will go in there. This will be beveled off at a 45, very much like this, and um, then this upper corner will be radiused. I thought I'd go over our setup real quick here as we proceed with these tool holders. Now I needed a rotary table to cut this radius here and the reality is I don't have a proper rotary table but I do have a couple of these latless rotary tables which are manually indexed, they lock in position and everything. Not ideal for this but it uh, it's worked already. I've got the first one done and we'll go back and do the second one um, on camera. We'll just fast forward that so if it's interesting to you well, you can go ahead and watch it. What it is, is we've got the Atlas rotary table bolted down to the table, of course. And then I've got a little Atlas four-jaw chuck, or Craftsman four-jaw chuck that I've had kicking around. Had it adapted to my big Sheldon and realistically don't ever use it there, so I thought it would be perfect on here, and it will. For now, I've just got a little plug underneath, centered it up through the, the center hole in the table, and the, 
back um, recess in the chuck, so it uh, centers up there. And I just got it clamped to the table. A project coming up, I think, is going to be we'll make a, a proper base plate to mount to this rotary table because I can see quite a few little applications for it for here. So with the plug-in and everything, it centers up very nicely. So I just brought it uh, up under the spindle, centered the center of the chuck with a dial indicator, and then mounted the piece in it and centered it under the spindle. So we're all zeroed out there. Then what I've done is I've just manually rotated it, done our offset, manually rotated it to get this outer radius, and then locked it in position to machine off the 45 degree angle or approximately 45 degree angle on the back side. All right, there's the machining so far. They both pretty well match. We're down well below the floor. This will get cut off, I think, just under half an inch of support there. The rest of this will be turned for shank. What I'm going to do is, and we've got them both do the same thing. There'll be a fair amount of hand finishing on them, but most of the machining is going to be just fine for it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take it back over the bench, get some layout fluid, deburr it, get some layout fluid on it. And then I'm going to just make some marks, do some layout, and we're going to cut out part of this waste on the bandsaw. I've got to build a little stub arbor to go in there to center it up and drive it off of the, off of the headstock end. We'll put a uh, live center in the back end, and then we'll turn our shank. So Now here's our setup to turn the shank. And we had it blocked out to this point before. Now I've taken it to the bandsaw, just cut off a little bit of this excess material just so we don't have to turn as much. This is a ragged cut anyway because we're doing interrupted cuts all the way around and have to do interrupted cuts around this edge to, to get where we want to be. So it's, uh, it's kind of rough, so we just got rid of that extra material. Here's the setup. I turned just a piece of 3 8 rod to give me a pilot to match our 5 16 hole in the middle. And it's going to set on there just like that. And we can run a tailstock, a live center, up into the back end of it. And get that. We won't secure it yet. So we're still floating. We have to have a way to drive it. So I've already drilled the uh, 1032 holes for uh, holding our tool bit in place. And I've just taken a piece of scrap and used one of these holes. Set it up in there. And tighten it down. And we effectively have a drive dog there. And I'm just shifting between a couple of 
high-speed steel bits, interrupted cuts like this, why I had to tear up tar carbide real quick. So all I'm going to do is uh, just start roughing it out, and we've got our drive dog there. So there's the setup. I'm going to go ahead and start roughing this out. I'll leave the camera run for a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. We'll just fast forward through that. I won't show you very much of that. But we'll get this one roughed out and shaped and uh, then we can go back and finish them out. We're getting awful close on these. I uh, will check fit and then polish that a little bit more probably. There's our part. We'll go ahead, we'll check the fit in the spindle in, or in the uh, tailstock. And if we need to, we'll polish that a little bit more before we take our drive dog out because we can put it back in and it's repeatable. I'm going to go ahead and deburr those edges and uh, then we'll go over to the bench and take a look at them. Well, we've done a little polish on our two parts. We've got them both turned. This is the way they look, and the way these set up, let's go ahead and um, install our pivot pins in them while we're right here, since I've already got everything ready to do that. There we go, that was only way too much. I've already ground one end of these. All these are, I believe, a 332nd 093 is the uh, diameter to match the hole. And I didn't grind that one small enough. set in there just like that so we've got a little pivot pin on them drill coming up through the end like that so you have a, a dimple in the end of your part that you want to drill and you'll set your facing tool has to be tangent and on center, we're still not quite right there. And that will face off your material. So, other than to install my set screws, tap my holes there to retain the center drill. This is not the center drill I'm going to use. We'll put a regular machine screw drill in there. And then we'll... Uh, 
have to take our tool bits, we'll cut them to the proper length, and we'll have to sharpen them. To sharpen them, I'll get out the little corn tool and cutter grinder, and we'll uh, do some work with those, and this project will be done. With the exception of, we still have to put our put our name on the tops of them there, and uh, there again, another one of those that will eventually blue, I'm sure. But anyway, once we get them set up, I will take a look at them and uh, see how it's going to work. As always, guys, if you find something useful here, why well, you might want to hit that like. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I'd appreciate it if you did. And any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.